you see? I mean, it's so obvious. A person in red passing by as we get into our car to go. And a red car. Do they, all right, do they want you to know that there's an American Stasi and that you are helpless and that you can do nothing about it? Here we are coming out of Petco. Now, you know I never say individuals or gang stalkers, but isn't it a little curious that as we just came out of Petco, a person in, with a red shirt walks by and a red SUV comes by. Now, I'll give you my theory on this. Well, I'm not gonna give you my theory, but I'm just gonna put this conjecture out there, and that is, do they want you to know that there's an American Stasi? That our neighborhood watch groups now use red cars, red trucks, wear or carry red in government gang stalking. The tactic is mobbing. There's been books about it, mobbing. Normally, we see it in the workplaces, but the United States government, under Cheney Mukasey, started it in the country, a kind of COINTELPRO program, where now, and they randomly, they picked a, um, a financial advisor in New Jersey, a nurse in Northern California. They picked a famous author in, I believe it was North Carolina. They're randomly picking people. I was a teacher in New York to target for this program, who might, like the author in North Carolina, who had a dispute with a neighbor over her cats. I had a dispute with my fireman neighbor over throwing leaves on my property. So there's always a conflict that starts it. There's a neoconservative crazy sociopath that gets you put on a watch list and then they gang stalk you 24-7 for years. Because today in America we have an American Stasi. Did they want you to know it? They wanted the American people to feel helpless? There's nothing you can do about it? Well, I say, folks, you can do something about it. You can pick a Bernie Sanders or a Rand Paul or an Elizabeth Warren, a reform candidate for president, and you can diss those Republicans with neoconservative foreign policies. You can diss Hillary Clinton, who would institute a neoconservative foreign policy. We can do something about it, and it starts in the presidential election of 2016.